What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate and the Office 365 Outlook Connector, and we're going to look at the action which is Update Contact V2. So Update Contact V2 allows you to update a contact to see all the fields that you get on Create Contact, but you can update it with some different values. So you could use this potentially for when you're creating contacts in your Outlook, maybe you could populate the company field and if the company field is populated we could look up to your dynamics or your cds system find the company name uh, match those two companies in there and maybe either add a link to it in your dynamics or bring maybe the company telephone number into the contact so there's loads of different things that we can do with this uh, and we are going to look at that today so we are in Power Automate. I have a flow here and it's got a manual trigger. And then the first thing we are doing is we're going to create a contact. So I create a contact in my default folder called contacts. We're using the given name of Matt Murdock and then we are going to uh, give him the telephone number. So these are the three required fields that we need. So from there, I will add a new step. We will go down to Office 365 Outlook and we will scroll down until we get to update a contact or update contact v2. So again, we get all the fields as you can kind of see here, and we can do things so like you know, for instance, if we did have that company name, we could potentially go off and look at the address and bring the address in here, which would be really useful for maybe salespeople that are on the road, want to quickly look up and they've got their Outlook on their phone, whereas it'll take a few minutes to log into Dynamics, and they could look straight on their phone and find uh, find the contacts. Um, details. So we do still need three pieces of content. So we still need the, the the folder ID. So we'll choose contacts for this one. In the ID, we need the ID of the contacts. That's why we're actually creating the contact as part of this process. So we'll use the ID that we're taking from there. We also need the the given name and the home telephone number. Do I put telephone number in there? Oh yeah, telephone number in there as well. So, um, so yeah, we also need the given name. So I don't want to overwrite the name that's in there. So I will just use, I'll just search given name, choose that. But what we are going to do is we're going to override the telephone number. So I'll override the telephone number and put 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so that's different from what we've got here is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is just one, one way we could use this. We could do something else with it. We could... Uh, maybe uh, into an email address, for instance. So email address name, we could say uh, Matt, uh, Matt Murdoch. Uh, an email address could be uh, Matt at, um, what is it called, Murdoch, uh, Murdoch and Foggy uh, dot law, something like that. Um, and and we, can, we can update those things. So we can test this out, so we'll hit test. I'll perform a trigger action, we'll save and test. Do, 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 do. We'll run the flow, we click done. It ran successfully, that's good. Switch over to my Outlook. Uh, we can see this new one just came in down at the bottom. We can see it's come in, it's got the email address here, it's got the telephone number here. So these are things that we've updated. So the first action just created it only created it with a couple of pieces of information, just the name and the telephone number. So we created the name and the telephone number. We didn't have email address. We didn't have uh, anything else in here. So you see email address is blank. We just got name and telephone number. And then what we did is we went ahead and we updated it. So yeah, you can expand this to do a bunch of other things. You could go and um, get some information from somewhere else and populate it into here. You could take the information from in here and then populate it somewhere else. Um, and then and then come back and say yes I've, I've updated it and put that somewhere um, so there's loads of different ways that we can we can use this this action but as always I want to know what you guys you use this for so let me know in the comments down below do you integrate with other systems do you write them back do you pull in information from other systems and update this what do you use it for let me know if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful if you could like and share it with your friends that would be appreciated if you've not already hit the subscribe button and stay up to date with all my videos I'll see you next time.